Hello friends, press the subscribe button and hit the bell icon for more such easy videos. Hello friends, I am back with a new video and this video will be talking about some important parts of ecology. Not the entire chapter but the most probable questions that can come in NEET exam. It's a diagram based question which is mostly asked from this ecology chapter. So this is the first question where we are talking about biome distribution with respect to annual temperature and precipitation. So this kind of diagram will come and it will be mentioned as A, B, C, D, E, F, G. They might ask you anything. So first we need to understand one very important thing that different organisms they adapt in different way but the adaptation is mainly for what? The adaptation is mainly for two things. First thing is survival and the second is reproduction that is continuation of the race. Sun and tilt of the earth's axis causes annual precipitation and variation. We all know that. Every season is with respect to the tilt of the earth's axis. Variation and precipitation together results in different biome. So this is the most important aspect that we need to understand. Now when we look at this diagram very carefully, what we should understand? Look at the lower x-axis, it talks about mean annual precipitation and the y-axis talks about mean annual temperature. So what is going to happen here? The A part. Friends, let's see the A part. When you look at the A part, what do you need to understand? The temperature is minus 5. So basically it's the cold area. So it is the nothing but Arctic and Alpine tundra area. So tundra region where the temperature goes minus 5, even minus 10 degrees Celsius. Look at the B part. When you look at the B section, you will understand the temperature is somewhere more than 0 or 5, but the annual precipitation is somewhere on the higher side. So basically these are tall trees forming coniferous forest and we look at the C part where the temperature is also high and the annual precipitation is also somewhere in between so it is called as temperate forest. When you look at the D part the temperature is somewhere around 20 to 25 degrees Celsius but mean annual precipitation is on the higher side somewhere around 400 so definitely it is tropical forest. When you look at the E part, the temperature is very much high, 25 degrees Celsius, but mean annual precipitation is very less. So this area indicates what? It's a desert. And when you talk about the last one, the F part, the mean annual precipitation is between 50 to 100, temperature is around 20. This results in the formation of grassland. So remember, these are the options that you have to write in your exam. Let's understand now second question. So this is the diagram that we get when we need to find out what is A, what is B and what is C. So first of all, look at the A part. A is called as conformus. Now the question comes here, what are basically conformus? So we can say nearly all plants, they cannot maintain a constant internal environment. Even the animals also they cannot maintain their internal body temperature. So what we can say that their body temperature changes with the ambient temperature. As the surrounding temperature changes, the temperature of the body of that particular plant or animal also changes. These are basically conformers. So what exactly happens in case of conformers? We can say that the osmotic concentration of body fluid it changes with ambient osmotic concentration it simply means what as the osmotic concentration changes the body fluid concentration and the temperature will also change so basically what are conformers these are those plants and animals who can change their body temperature so when you look at the graph the line a is crossing the mean line it is crossing the B basically part that we need to understand. When you talk about B, B indicates a straight line from the x-axis. So basically what we need to understand here, B these are nothing but they are regulators. Regulators are basically those organisms which are able to maintain homeostasis. What do you mean by homeostasis? The ability of the body to maintain its internal environment 
irrespective of external environment. It means they maintain their body temperature constant. And in regulators, we have birds and the mammals. We human beings also, we are regulators. We can maintain and we always maintain our body temperature constant. So what we can say here, thermoregulation and osmoregulation both are maintained by regulators. Look at this C1. It has not crossed the B line or the axis of B. It is lower to B. It simply means what? These are partial regulators. They have tried to reach till the level B, but they have not reached B. Means they can regulate the body temperature, but not like regulators. So they perform certain activities to survive in unfavorable condition. What various activities animals can perform? So first activity I can say they migrate. We all have heard about migrations. Fishes, elephants, bears, they migrate from one place to another. So it's a type of a partial regulator. When we talk about migrate, but there is one more, it's called as suspend. So first what we need to understand, let's understand what is migrate. Organisms, they move temporarily away from stressful habitat to a more stable area and return back when the conditions are good. Again, it means if they are not able to adjust to the unfavorable condition, at least they migrate. They move away from that area to a stable area and they come back when the situations are good. Again, we have very simple examples. Siberian cranes, they migrate from Siberia to India. So it's a method of adaptation. These are partial regulators. So remember the example, Siberian crane. When you talk about suspend, it means what? The bacteria, fungus and the lower plants, what they do? They form spores to survive unfavorable conditions. And when the conditions become favorable, these spores germinate. Or we have a better example, that is seed dormancy. When the conditions are unfavorable, the seeds suspend their growth. And they undergo dormancy stage. They become dormant. That is also a kind of suspend. Or we may have the example of like hibernation. And we have one more word that is called as estivation. We need to understand what is hibernation. So hibernation is nothing but it's a winter sleep. And estivation is summer sleep. Like frogs, they sleep or they basically estivate during summer. And this is basically escape in time. So this is what we need to understand. Let's see the third question, diagram based, which can be asked in exam. It is the representation of age pyramid for human population. So these are three graphs. Look at the first one, where it is going, you know, from bigger to smaller. So it is expanding population. Look at this B part. The second, first and the second step is equal. So it is called as stable population. But look at this part. It's decreasing from the lower side. So it is called as declining population. What we need to understand here is how to understand the expanding population. Population is decided based on three criteria. One is pre-reproductive age group, reproductive age group and the post-reproductive age group. So in case of expanding, pre-reproductive age group is more. And in stable population, the pre-reproductive age group and the reproductive age group both appears to be same. This is how you can understand a stable population. And when you talk about the C part, the declining population, it means what? The pre-reproductive age group is less than the normal. So this is what we need to understand here. So whenever we see such kind of graph, in exam they might ask you A, B and C. You need to understand the diagram and label it accordingly. We need to understand one most important concept that the population of any particular country will purely depend on the number of pre-reproductive age group organisms or humans. Let's see the next diagram. Now this is based on population density. Here we can see some arrows in the center there is population density. So based on this diagram, we need to identify what is A, what is B, what is C, what is D and in numbers 1, 2, 3, 4. So what we are going to do, we will first try and understand from A, the organism enters the population density and in number B, it leaves the population density. Look at C, enters, the arrow is towards the population density and in D, it is away. 
so what is a basically it is called as i migration i myself enters into a population that is i migration it simply means what the people they come from different areas basically so that is what we need to understand so people coming from different population it means what the population density increases so it's a positive growth a thumbs up so you can say positive but look at the b part the population is getting lesser why because of immigration e migration it means the people leave the existing population and they go since there is decrease in the population density we can say it is negative so here the number 4 basically becomes minus so basically this is how you can identify b when you talk about c i put it in this way c is nothing but let's check it is b what is b it is birth rate or i can also call it as natality number of people taking birth so if there is birth taking place what will happen the population will increase so definitely here it is positive and when the population decreases d basically i call it as a death rate or it is also called as mortality so what will happen here the population will now decrease so it is called as negative or minus we need to understand one simple calculation density increases if b plus i that is nothing but birth rate plus i migration increases and on the same hand the density decreases if d plus c e, that is the death rate and the immigration increases in the next video i will be bringing more such diagram based questions of ecology till then do subscribe give a like thank you very much